JJ, the CONCACAF W Gold Cup, U.S. women and Canada in an all-time, Jesus. in a classic last night, but I don't know if it was for the right reasons. 2-2, and then the U.S. go on and win 3-1 on penalties. But that is only, a, I mean, it's a huge part of the story, but my God, what an absolutely ridiculous game of soccer this was. Uh, yeah, you know, Watching this game, it made me think more about my opinion from the other day when we were talking about Real Salt Lake and LAFC and that match taking place. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm okay with it. Was I wrong? <laughs> like, the, now I do think what happened last night was way worse, but if, if the, if the basis for that opinion is if, if me saying last night shouldn't have happened because of how dramatically it affected the way the game was played, that was kind of true in the Real Salt Lake LAFC game as well. So if you feel that for one game, I wonder if you kind of have to feel it for, for both. Although I'm going um, off on a on a tangent there. Like I was reminded of England versus Poland or Poland versus England a few years ago. Remember it got called off and the referee went out and the test was to throw the ball and the ball wouldn't bounce and it wouldn't go, you know, it wouldn't go any distance. Yeah. Uh, it was just it, but the Polish field was just, was probably on the same level as what the US and Canada played on last night. Exactly that, was, that way. That was crazy. It was it was insanity. The only thing I would say was that the, whatever drainage system they have at Snapdragon Stadium seemed to kick in uh, in the second half, or just maybe well, no, all halftime was spent with a team of people squeegeeing water off the field. They were doing yeah. it manually. Yeah, I mean, and it was sure still it was still terrible. In the I mean, it was half. it was bad. Honestly, I don't think the game should have started. It shouldn't have started. And, uh, and yeah, but it did, and it was. I mean, you can't say it wasn't fun. No, it was very fun. But like the other question though that I have with it is like should a regular season game be handled differently than a than a cup semifinal? Like this is a semifinal of a cup. And so you like, just have to like the suck. stakes the stakes I, are just higher. And so I think for a was, game for it to be turned into something like that, like you didn't learn anything about either team last night. No, do we, nothing. Do we Absolutely know that the better nothing. team won? I mean, it's the same conditions for both, but like I, I don't know if it's were the US better than Canada. Like I, I mean, what we can say what we can say about the, about the football was, I know it's a, it's pretty much an, a, an assist from the pitch, but Shaw's first goal, the finish is brilliant. Sure. Um, considering that she dinks it, she clips it, and it still has enough to go in. Because <laughs> there was every chance I thought that was just going to slop on the line and stay there on the line. Um, the Canadian equaliser was superb. Mm -hmm. It was great cross, great header from Heitema. Um Smith's goal was a lovely finish. And who would have put down at the start of the game that Rose Lavelle would be winning headers against centre-backs flick-ons. Um, that, was, that was a nice goal and a nice finish. Um, we, we have to talk about Alyssa Nair because she turns out to be the hero in the end with three penalty saves. All the same side. All the same height. Almost identical. Incredible. Incredible. Um, but... The equalizer goal in 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 extra time, I mean, it's a it's something we've spoken about. It's such a penalty, she absolutely cleans uh, Gilles out of the way, like just goes through her. It is there's no, it's completely reckless. I'm wondering if she should have been sent off for it. Oh, whoa, oh my! I mean, she's going for the ball, but that doesn't matter. Um, it's it's without due care for the for other people on the field. Just oh my god, it, it was horrifying, and she nearly hurt herself. Probably did yeah. hurt herself in, in in the collision. Um, and I definitely think one of the Canadian players was trying to in indicate to the referee, you know, a yellow here is it's only part of it. Anyway, it was a great penalty by Leon, who would then miss one. Why didn't she just do the same thing she did in the first penalty? Well, maybe she but, was in her head. Yeah, because she she played at perfect height, and um, I don't want to detract from Alyssa Nair. It's she took a a, a super penalty herself. Uh, yeah. Um, and she made three saves. That's a great performance. Uh, but uh, the Canadian penalties were, as someone predicted, I would say on Twitter, not good, not good. Crazy game. Utterly crazy. Insane. Insane game. Um, JJ, it reached a point. So Jeff Carlisle at halftime, uh, he tweeted this, which I thought was funny. He said, I suspect this is what Twyla Kilgore's halftime talk will consist of. One, anyone playing a ground pass in our defensive third will be subbed immediately. Two, for God's sake, don't dribble. Three, safety first, defending at all times. If the US WNT does these three things, they'll win. It's so hard to do any of that in the water, though. 
But the like first says, one, no, no, says, no, don't, the don't, first don't. one though. I mean that that to the point where, I mean, look, it's how Jaden Shaw, it's how she scored her goal, that Canadian back pass, like it was it made that, no sense. Though. That started to get to the point of where like my Panenka treatment. If you do a Panenka, you're out whether you score or not. Anybody attempting a pass back to the keeper, I would have yanked him right on out of there. Yeah, Twilight you know what she was better he, off. Smashing that straight ahead of her over the bar or out for a corner kick. Yeah, but I maybe she didn't know at that point. Now I don't. I think that there's just certain football instincts, soccer instincts that these players have from years of playing, and like even watching the game, like the U.S. There were moments where, like a pass back to the keeper is what you do, and instead they were smashing it horizontally out of play over the line for a throw in it. And it would take me a minute each time to be like, wait, what, why are you doing? Oh, that's right. You can't pass on this field. And like, it was, it was crazy. Um, you know, props to Shaw. That's now four goals for her in this tournament. She scored in each of her first four starts. You kind of witnessing the, I mean, the, the birth of the next, like the next U S superstar. This is really, I mean, this has really been fun to watch. Like you said, her, her awareness to pounce on that as quickly as she did and the finish in those conditions over a keeper rushing at her on a wet field. It was, I mean, she's 19 years old. Like this is, this is really fun watching this happen right now. And then one of the other heroes I wanted to mention, look, Sophia Smith scoring that goal in extra time. That was a great goal and a great job. Like you said, by Rose Lavelle to win a header against two players perfectly into Smith's path. But something that I enjoyed even more than that, the last time we really saw Sophia Smith for the U S it was her missing a decisive penalty at a world cup. This game then in a semifinal of a wild game, a memorable, emotional, physically draining, exhausting game. This game then goes to penalties. And what happens? Twyla Kilgore to her credit, sends Sophia Smith out there to take the very first one. What has happened in the past that be damned. You are still someone that we believe in here. And she converts it. It was close. But it was perfect. It was into the side netting, just snuck between the keeper and the and the post. Then she scored. You could see that there was relief, I think, that it went mm. in. And good for her. I just thought, like, she needed that to go in after having missed such a vital one. I thought that was – I was I was happy for her and certainly happy for the team that they pulled that out. Because, I mean, look, I don't know if, a, if winning a game like that in those conditions, I don't know if it tells you that a team is good or bad or whatever, but I do know – Games like that, I do think bond teams, like that's a shared experience, winning an insane game like that, that I think help teams grow and get closer together. You know, new players, veteran players, like they all have that together, that they were a part of that last night. I hope they can finish the job now against Brazil. So wild one last night. Don't know what it means in terms of how good the team is, but you'd rather win those than lose them. So props to them for having gotten it done. Crazy. Yeah, insane. I still think. No way I would have started that game. Yeah. Christina there. Uncle was really good all night as well. I was following her on Twitter. She was on Paramount talking about it. And it was funny. She was saying, like, yeah, technically it's the referee's decision. But she made it clear, like, that may be what it says in the in the law, the laws of the game. But in, in practical application, that is not how it goes. Someone asked her. Somebody asked her on Twitter if the referee can stop the match. And she said they technically can, and by law, yes. In practice, the match commissioner approves it. If you take that decision alone as a referee without their green light at this kind of event, the the competition won't be happy. Oh, so, Lord. like, we all got bosses. You know, the referee, yeah. yeah. Even a referee. <laughs> so she could. Not the but... ultimate arbiter of everything. And And you saw she tried. She went over to the side and rolled the ball, and, like, it didn't move. And the commissioner, I guess, who was standing there said, play on. And so, all right, well, on we go. Insane game. Insane game, but fun for those who were able to stay up till the end uh, to see how it finished. It was it was crazy. You've been listening to the Caught Offside Soccer Podcast. 